Hello and welcome to another video lecture from Architects Academy. Today we are going to learn about what is meant by scale and proportion. So what is scale? A scale denotes the relationship between objects to each other. For example, you will see here that different objects have been shown on a line which will show the scale of these objects. For example, you can see that the scale of an elephant, elephant to a double deck of bucks is now shown relative to each other and the scale of this double decker bus to the whale has been shown to each other. So the scale gives us an idea of the relationship between these two objects. So scale is the relative size of one object to another. And scale is an important concept in understanding how humans relate to the objects around them. So normally we will be dealing with different types of objects and these objects would be related to our scale and therefore scale is an important concept when you are studying architecture. Now this sketch again shows you the relationship of the human being to different tigers. So you will see that the different tigers have different relationships to the height of the human being and this has been denoted by linearly and therefore you will see the relative scale between all the tigers also and the tiger and the human being. Now scale has a psychological impact on the observer. For example, objects or buildings which are very tall or very wide seem to be overpowering to the person observing them. So as you can see in this photograph, if you are standing below this building, you will see that this building will become overpowering on the person looking at this building. So you will see that the scale of any object will have a psychological impact on the observer. Horizontal buildings relate more to the human scale and create a sense of relaxation or repose. So you can see here that the basic lines of this building are horizontal and you will see that when you look at such a building you will feel a sense of relaxation or repose and you can easily relate to such buildings. Vertical buildings on the other hand do not relate well to the human scale and are imposing. They create a feeling of excitement and tension. So as you can see here this building is imposing or it is uh, sort of dominating the human skill and therefore there is a feeling of excitement and tension while looking at such structures. Scale can also be used to create a psychological reaction in the observer. For example, we associate large size with domination or power. So buildings which are the seats of power like palaces, parliament buildings, president's house etc. are large and massive buildings. So here you can see the building of the Rashtrapati Bhavan and you can see the scale of the building with relationship to the human scale here. So this is a very massive and large building and this denotes a seat of power that is the president's house. On the right hand side you can see a French palace again the seat of power. The king used to live in this palace and therefore it is also depicting a sort of a sense of a power and domination for the observer. Now in Britain this is another example where you can see that the parliament building is designed to be a very dominant building. It is a very large building and uh, you will see that the house of the Prime Minister on the other hand is like a commoner's house. Now uh, it would be also important here to note that here it is a sort of an abstract concept which is depicting that the parliament is important and strong but the Prime Minister is a representative of the common people and therefore his house is not a very dominant building but an ordinary building. Sometimes scale can be used 
to uh, in different ways like for example in some cases smaller scales are used for example building for children like in this case this is a primary school or an elementary school and you can see that the furniture here has been designed in such a way that it relates to the children and it, the elements in the primary school can be deliberately designed to be of a smaller scale than for adults. Scale is also used to denote importance. For example, monuments are always larger in scale than the observer so that they stand out and get attention and importance. This can be seen in the photograph of India Gate and in the photograph of the Statue of Liberty. Both of these are monuments and therefore you will see that these monuments have been given importance by increasing their scale. Now let us see what is meant by proportion. As we said that scale denotes the relationship of one object to another. Proportion on the other hand means the relationship of parts of the same object to each other. For example, if you see the human figure, you will see that the height of the head of the human being has got a certain relationship to the other parts of the building, uh, to other parts of the human body. For example, the total height of the human being can be divided into eight parts with each part denoting the height of the head. Now these proportions would change in case of a child, in case of a baby and in case of a very small baby. So you'll see that these proportions are like fixed rules which we can follow while uh, considering different objects. Now here you can see this human ear. You can see that it also has got certain proportions and these proportions are like a sort of a rule which will always be followed. This sketch is showing you the, uh, this photograph is showing you the shell of a marine creature called as a nautilus shell. And again here you can see that certain proportions of the parts are followed. This drawing is showing you the proportions of the human face. So as you can see that these are the standard proportions of the human face. Though in every person these can slightly vary. But even then you can say that uh, as a general rule, these proportions can be said to be the proportions of the human face. You can see the same thing in nature that whatever you see in nature like petals or the flowers, they also are following a certain relationship to each other and therefore these are also in proportion. Now you will see that in nature there are certain mathematical rules which are followed. One of these rules is called as the golden ratio. The golden ratio is 1 is to 1.618. So if you draw a square of 1 by 1, you will see that the other rectangle next to it is of a size of 1 is to 0.618. So this is a sort of a proportion which is seen repeated in nature many times. So what you will see here is again the golden ratio with A dimension as being the square and part B is the 0.618. So this particular ratio is called as the golden ratio as, and is denoted by this symbol which is called as phi. You will see that this golden ratio was also used by the ancient uh, architects in designing the buildings. For example, you will see here the sketch of the Parthenon where uh, the, the mm, photograph of a Parthenon where you will see that this has been used. The golden ratio is also seen in the human figure. For example, here you will see the relationship of the hand to the arm of the human being which also follows a similar ratio that is 1 is to 1.618. Now based on this particular ratio, you will see that there is a certain uh, sequence of numbers called as the Fibonacci, Fibonacci numbers. The Fibonacci numbers were first developed by Indians and later on they were carried via the Arabs and Fibonacci was a Italian scientist who actually found out this secret and then put them in a form of a formula. 
so you can see that uh, if you start with 0 and then uh, you add two numbers before it then you will get numbers like this 1 2 then 2 plus 1 is 3 3 plus 2 is 5 5 plus 3 is 8 8 plus 5 is 13 13 plus 8 is 21 21 plus 13 is 34 and so on so this is written by the expression xn is equal to xn minus 1 plus xn minus 2 and so on so what you will get is something like this uh, this is called as the Fabernick uh, sequence and you will see that this also follows the golden rule that is the ratio of 1 is to 0.618 now the funny part of this is that if you join this, the squares by means of an arc like this and if you go on extending this arc over the number so you'll see that this arc is drawn in the diagonals of the square you will see that it forms a spiral this spiral is what we see actually being used in nature so if you look at the different examples like for example this nautilus shell you will see that it grows out like the Fibonacci sequence the same is true with the human ear again here this spiral is followed the same is seen when we are seeing the uh, formation of a galaxy this is the formation of uh, a storm uh, or a typhoon or what we can say a hurricane and the same sequence is also seen when we are seeing the petals of the flowers or the central part of a sunflower now the next type of rule which we see which is also interesting is called as the rule of the rule of thirds so what you are seeing here is that when you divide an object or a photograph in this case into nine parts and if you keep the central part or the central subject of this uh, photograph in one third of these nine parts then the photograph looks much more interesting and dramatic so you will see that by having a rule of thirds or following the rule of thirds you can create tension energy and interest in the composition now the same is seen here that the main subject here which is the bottle carrying a letter is kept at one third the distance from the edge the rule of thirds is also seen here in a comparison now the same photograph has been taken in such a way that the main subject lies in the center of the photograph now this is a symmetrical arrangement and therefore here we will see symmetry we will see stability but this picture can be slightly boring or dull because it does not create a sense of excitement now the same photograph you will see that the subject or the main focus has been shifted to the rule of thirds that is at one third from the side here what we are seeing is this becomes asymmetric unstable but it creates a sense of interest and excitement and therefore we'll see that there is more tension energy and interest in the composition the same thing can be seen in this photograph the same object has been photographed in two different ways in this case the center of focus which is the tree here has been kept in the center of the photograph here again you are seeing symmetry stability but this is not a very interesting composition while as in the second photograph you will see that the main subject is now kept at a distance of one third from the side and therefore you are seeing here a symmetry uh, it is slightly unstable you can see but it creates an interest and excitement so the rule of thirds is followed by many photographers to create a sense of interest and they try to keep the focus on the subject in such a way that they follow the rule of thirds now the rule of thirds is also used in architecture as you can see here the building this particular building has been designed in such a way that the central focus or the central point of interest of this building is kept in one third part of this particular length of the building same is seen here this total building if we divide it into three equal parts you will see that the central part or the focus the main uh, 
part of the building is now located on the axis which is passing through one third part of this uh, entire structure. The same thing is seen here in this photograph. Again, the rule of thirds has been followed to create a sense of interest. So by, uh, by looking at this presentation, there are some points which you should remember. And the points to remember are that scale is the relationship of objects to each other. Second point to remember is scale is important in architecture as buildings and objects within a building are related to the human scale. Third point is scale is used in different ways by the architects to create different psychological reactions. Proportion means the relationship of the parts of an object, object to each other. In nature, we see that some mathematical formulae are seen. We see that this is we see this in the golden ratio and the Fabianski sequence. We use the rule of third when composing pictures or parts of a building to create dramatic effects. So this is uh, what we wanted to learn in this lecture. Um, we'll see further about scale and proportion in further videos. Thank you.